This is my transistorized signal tracer and I want to talk about what's in the box. So I took the back cover off and turned it over and at the top is an ordinary transistorized audio amplifier. And you can see the speaker magnet in the center there of the circuit board. Below that is a 9 volt battery. Below that is the volume control, a few capacitors, there's a diode in there, and below that is the connections to the signal tracer. From left to right, the connections are the RF radio frequency, the center is AF audio frequency, and the most right one is the common connection or ground. Here is a side view of the signal tracer. Now you can see the transistors and the little transformer and a little bit more of the speaker and on the right hand side you can see the top of the volume control where the connections are. Here is a closer look at the top of that volume control. The larger capacitor, round one that is labeled dot zero two microfarad capacitor, one end goes to the high end of the volume control and the other end goes to the audio frequency connection. The dot zero zero one microfarad that connection goes to the RF and the other side, you can see a twisted wire there, goes to the diode and then the diode goes to the high end of the volume control. If we are tracing an audio signal represented by this drawing, we would connect the common lead of the signal tracer to usually the chassis and then the other lead to the audio frequency of the signal tracer and that way we would be able to move through the audio section of a radio or a record player or a high-end amplifier tracing the signal to find out where it disappeared or where it became mushy or distorted. However, if we were working in a AM radio and we determined that the problem is in the RF section, we would switch the signal tracer from the AF connection to the RF connection and we would be looking at the modulated signal through the radio. And depending on where we are in the radio, it'll either be the IF or the station frequency. Looking at the drawing, you can see that it is being modulated, but there are mirror images of each other, positive above and negative below. So essentially, all that energy adds up to zero and an audio amplifier would not be able to amplify it or it'd be very very weak. So that's where the diode comes in and another way to think of it it is a portable detector and what that does is it cuts the signal in half. Now the energy does not add up to zero and an audio amplifier can now amplify that. Now with this portable detector you would be able to trace the RF signal through the front end of the AM radio. Here's the diagram of this signal tracer. Now the amplifier is 
transistorized, so I'm reluctant to use this on uh, tube amplifiers and tube radios. So I'm going to use the circuit here and change out the audio amplifier, the transistorized one, and use a tube amplifier and build a signal tracer that I can use with tube amplifiers and tube radios. I'll keep the values the same on the capacitors, but I will up the working voltage on all the capacitors to at least 630 volts. The signal tracer is a simple device, but it is a very effective tool to use in troubleshooting.